Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the outdoors. I am out on the ice, about to get set up for the day. Walleye slash maybe some perch. I know there's some perch in the area that I, I'm fishing right now too. I'm going to use my Mega Live right now and find a place to pop up the otter for the day. And we are going to camp out into the evening, maybe a little bit into the dark and see if we can make something happen. I was out yesterday, I caught about eight, 10 fish, mostly smaller walleye. Never got a good flow for video, decided, you know what, let's come back out and let's do it again and see if we can make a better quality video because I just wasn't happy with yesterday's video. And I have a nice day right now, semi nice. There's a little bit of a storm rolling in, it's supposed to snow a little bit and type of thing. Hence why we're gonna pop up the otter and everything like that. So let's uh, get searching. Okay, so I think I found my spot. I had it in forward mode here a little bit ago and I have a sharp drop off this way here. So I think I'm gonna set up on the top of it. I'm at about 22 feet-ish it looks here. See, I can turn my overlay on and really look. I always keep uh, this all off just because it's better for the whole filming side of it here, but go to uh, digital readouts, overlay, yeah, 22 feet. Okay, we are officially set up. I'll do a tour of inside here in a little bit. I've got the uh, otter peg down here. This is the otter resort hub. People ask me a lot of times like, which shelter should I get? If I could only have one shelter, this would be it. It's probably my most used. It's the otter vortex resort hub. I love this thing. I've used it for some overnighters in the past. I kind of swap between that and the monster lodge for overnighters. But this thing is perfect for two, three people. One person, if you like lots of room like I need for filming, this is definitely my, my favorite shelter out of all of the otters that I do have. But as you can see, we're in a snowstorm, baby. So hopefully, hopefully it's gonna turn the fish on a little bit. As I've been setting up, I haven't seen one mark yet. So, ooh, hope I don't have to turn this into a full, uh, gear video type of thing hope we can add some fish at some point okay first things first i might organize in here a little bit more at some point or switch it around but i'm really set up i'm going to be running a jig and a minnow as well as an active bait so i'll drop down the jig and the minnow first so i can use it at some point as well so it'll be in close kind of reach to me here when i'm sitting down i'm using a 1 8 ounce google eye jig it's uh been a staple of mine for the last couple of years and yeah, little salted minnows are still a little bit frozen. We'll put them in front of the heater. Heater is something I might move to this side at some point as well. But I will give a, a tour in here eventually. But I'm like super set up. This feels good. Like this feels really good. I'm committed. Like I'm staying here until an hour past dark, no matter what. I'm so committed today. Even if I get one bite. On my active rod here, I'm going no bait, but I'm going with a quarter ounce hyper hammer from Acme. I haven't used these since the open water season where Carter and I absolutely laid a licking on them. It was really good. Like if you want to see an introduction to the hyper hammers, go watch the video. Oh, here comes the marking. Here we go. Come on, come on. Nice, nice. Jig in the middle, baby. Jig in the middle. First fish of the day. Hopefully it's a sign of some things to come. It's gonna be fun if I hook into a big one with this clear water under here, or the clear ice, I should say. The old jig in a minute. Well, first fish of the day. Hopefully it's a start of some things to come. So right now on that last fish, I have my mega live set to the widest at 20 feet. So I can see 20 feet each side. So I can see when that fish is coming in from quite a ways i could zoom it in here a little bit and get a little bit more detail which maybe i'll do later when i have lots of marks start to come in but right now i'm just trying to get a feel for what's going on down there more than anything but i can i can zoom it in and get it down to like 10 12 feet away so 
it'll just kind of tighten everything up but it's really neat being able to see 20 feet out out each way to see what's what's going on right now oh mark coming to the right up to the jig in a minute come on eat it jigging the minnows oh, drawing all the attention right now come on come on got him little guy it's all been small though so far it's all been small there's another fish down there too kind of following up small jigging the minnows getting all the attention though so far they're supposed to get bigger not smaller oh That was loud. So I've only been set up for an hour and a half. This changed drastically. I know one thing, this is going to make my walk back to the truck a lot harder pulling the sleighs. Oh boy, what was I thinking? Sure, nice and warm in here though. Love it. They seem to be a little bit finicky, so I'm going to try an active jig in the middle right here. And on that side, I'm gonna put a drench with a little sinker and just um, a minnow on a treble hook and use that for a dead stick. We're gonna, we're gonna try that for a bit. Oh, here we go, Mark coming straight up, right off the bottom. Never even really marked that at all. It just kind of came straight in, right off the bottom, right up to the jig and the minnow. I think making the switch here to a jig and a minnow actively over here is going to probably pay off, I would think. Still not what we're after. He would taste good, though. Oh, got to go back down. <laughs> See ya. Oh, there's a mark on the left, 20 feet out. Let's see what happens. Two marks. I just want to see him all of a sudden, like, see the lure just gain some speed. That'd be the dream, right? He's coming this way. Go up with it a bit. You can probably see it better up in the air. Here he comes. Look at this. Yep. Nice. Once I saw that mark cruising in off the bottom, I just brought it up a bit. They can see it from further away when it's up higher right like you don't always have to jig right near the bottom you can jig sometimes just a little bit off the bottom you'll be able to see it better okay get back down there buddy there's a bigger mark right here bigger mark come on come on bigger mark come on bigger mark oh come back come back come back come on come on Eat it. Yes, bigger fish. Nice. Nice. That was epic. That was epic to see that happen. Man, this is going to be a better fish. You could tell right away. Oh, I made the right switch here. It's a nice fish. It's not giant, but it's nice. I'm going to pull this up so it doesn't get caught here. That is awesome. Oh, went to the drench with a dead stick with uh or i should say with the dead minnow right here oh that is epic oh man look at that <laughs> so cool it's so slippery i gotta be so careful come on baby oh yeah i'm so excited it's not a it's not a giant it's just nice it was so cool to watch it underneath the ice in that clear water man this is the perfect dead stick rod Easy, girl. Easy. Easy. A 30 inch would look epic underneath that wall, underneath that ice. Easy, buddy. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, come on. Here we go. We got you. We got you. Here we go. Oh, maybe. 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 Okay. Yes. We got you. Yes. Right there. That's more what we're after right now. Beautiful. Probably like a 25, maybe 26 incher. So cool. Yeah, 20, 24 and three quarters. Not quite 25, 24 and three quarters. Beautiful fish. See ya. That was awesome. Awesome. So cool. Can you ever tell the difference of sizes of fish? 
like that mark was so much noticeably bigger than the other fish that I've caught so far. Like that was so cool. Okay, let's do a quick tour of the whole shack right now before I get more marks come in. Hopefully that's just a sign of some things to come. But one of my most asked questions last year is what kind of lighting I use. I use the Otter LED lights. These ones have a clip that you can put on for the pole. They also come with a strap for your flip over. I've got two sets going here right now because I need lots of lighting for filming. Those lights are powered by a Dakota Lithium power box. 10 amp hour, that thing is a rock star. It powers a lot of my stuff throughout the year. I have a couple of them which I'll take on bigger trips. Musky bump board right there, close. I got the Otter um, Sportsman Caddy here that I put a bunch of tackle in it, pliers, all that fun stuff there. Of course, the Helix 10 with the Mega Live. I have it on a big milk crate, which normally carries the big buddy heater, but I wanted to get it up a bit higher so I could see it better because sometimes with that GoPro on there, I don't get to see that screen very well. So I got it up a bit higher there, which is gonna be a little bit handier, I think, for me. Tripod here with the main camera. Sometimes I'll run a bucket with an easy cam post like I am over here. This is the bucket full of slush and snow with an easy cam post and a GoPro capturing the overhead shots of the whole ice basically when I am fighting a fish. And like I said, GoPro there as well. So two GoPros running plus the GoPro on top of my head and that cameras, that's what I'm running for cameras. I use these foam mats down here to keep stuff off of the ice. Sometimes it just helps keep stuff where it lasts a little bit longer. Camera case, buddy heater right here, the Otter Sidekick. This thing is super, super handy. Just watch sometimes, put something to weigh it down in the middle. Because if you put your rods on there, I know it can get a little bit back heavy. So I put something in the middle to weigh it down. Having a bubbly. You can get these Otter rod holders that fit in there nicely. They'll also, uh, there's other ways to mount them like on your shacks and stuff like that too, but they fit in here really nice. Those are the Otter rod holders. People laugh at me, but I love my Otter buckets because they're just a little bit bigger than a five gallon bucket. If you sit on it, you're a little bit higher. Pretty handy dandy. Like I said, more foam mats here. I've got more battery stuff drill to drill in my stakes outside. Cindy packed me lunch, which I haven't really got into yet. It's probably turn to the supper if I'm going to be staying late. Like I said, more foam mats. That covers pretty much everything in here. I'm, sh I'm sure I'm missing things, right? Then just ask away and I'll hopefully put it in a video in the future. But one question that I wanna answer that I've been getting a lot is, what type of pole and shuttle am I using for my Mega Live or unit here, the, the pole, et cetera? So I'm using from Arc Lab Motorsports, an aluminum pole. This thing is dynamite. You can extend it for later in the season. You got pieces. It's got the handle, so whichever way you put the transducer, that's the way you're pointed. And the shuttle itself, an aluminum shuttle, solid. I think once you start putting that big of a shuttle, or sorry, that big of a unit on a shuttle, the aluminum is definitely the way to go, in my opinion. The whole, the whole setup itself weighs 21 pounds, which seems like a lot, but for everything that's going on, it's not that much. The pole, you can get some clips, you can put it on the top of your handle. It's pretty handy when it comes to that. Come right to that dead stick. Oh, did it eat it? Yeah, it's on it. That dead stick is so nice. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. This is definitely the rod you want for dead stick walleye because it's beefy enough for big fish and it's light enough to be able to just see that tip move. I like it. I think that's like fish six of the day, something like that. Oh, gotta go down. I'd obviously much rather catch these fish with an active bait, aggressive, but when they're not aggressive, you gotta adapt to what they're doing. And right now, just slow, small presentations, smaller presentations. I know you can get a lot smaller than this too, but let's get this jig down there. Oh, we're going right up to the dead stick. Oh, just ate it. <laughs> Thing is a weapon. Small though, just tiny. But we are leveling them here. Oh, look at this. This mark just appeared up higher. I'm just gonna take it straight up. A little bit better fish. Oh yeah, oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. That 
definitely better fish. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, that is so cool. Come back. No, come back. I'm going to drop it right down and see if it'll follow it down. This is insane, like insane. Dinner bell maybe? Do I dare drop a dinner bell down real quick? Comes another mark. Oh, that one looks big too. Not the one on the right, the one on the left. It's not as big, but it's coming in fast. It's gonna eat, isn't it? Yeah, it just ate. It's not as big as the other one at all. Like. Not even close, but maybe, maybe I can still catch that fish. Like this isn't a bad fish at all, and the other one's way bigger. Come on, eat the dead stick, buddy. Oh, and it just eat it. Oh, come on. I'm like trying to horse in a 22, three incher because there's a bigger mark down there. Are you kidding me? I just horsed this fish in because there's a way bigger mark down there. This thing just flew in and ate. Well, that bigger one just circled and circled and circled and circled for the longest time. There's another mark down there, but I don't think it's him anymore. These marks that are just appearing, like underneath my jig, they're either coming from this way or this way. I know they're not coming from the left or the right because I'd see them on that screen. There's a mark on the left. Come on, come on, here it comes, here it comes, smaller, definitely smaller, <laughs> smaller than the uh, last one, that's for sure, and that mark, oh, I want that big guy to come back, it's cool, like I know I've said already in some other videos, live imaging I know never has the best separation from the bottom, but I could see like this bump just moving through the bottom, nice fish. Oh, look at the mark up high. It followed up. That's cool. So the two rods that I've mostly been using today is the Smoke Show and the Drench. This being this year's model, the Vanta Black. That being last year's model for the Medallion. But basically the, the same thing, just a few small changes. The Drench is a pretty ideal dead stick rod, as I always already mentioned a few times in this video, I'm sure. And this right now, I have an active jig in the middle, a 1 8 ounce Kalen's Google Eye with the long shank. And that's why I'm using the Smoke Show. It's a little bit smaller, uh, smaller jig. So using a little bit smaller rod. If I went to like a 3 8 ounce jig, I'd probably put that on the True Grit then. But you could get away still with the 3 8 ounce jig on the, the Smoke Show if you needed to. Well, it's 7 p.m. I fished an hour and a half into the complete darkness. It's really dark. Hopefully I don't get eaten by coyotes on the way home. I'm just kidding. I've had a few marks come through since my last clip, but nothing major. Some medium sized fish, just some smaller ones. I fired up some Smokies on the grill, whether I put that in here or not, I'm not sure. And had supper and was hoping for some more marks to come by, but I haven't. I've got a pile of bait on here right now. It's so cool to watch on the Mega Live, all that bait just kind of swimming around, but Anyways, I got about 20 minutes of packing up. Eh, maybe only 10, 15 minutes of pack up, but then I got probably a good half hour walk back through the snow now. So that will wrap up this video. Again, I never know what I covered in the video, what I didn't, that type of thing. No idea the length of this. I know I talked about rods a little bit. I've been missing reels lately in terms of talking about reels. I get that asked lately. I run pretty much all 500 series and a thousand size uh, series reels uh saharas and stratix and then i kind of match the line with what i'm using for for baits a lot of uh six to ten pound suffix 832 ice braid 
and then I'll pair that with a fluorocarbon leader too. Same thing, matching it to the size of rod in the base, whether it's six, eight, or 10 pound for the most part. So always mix it up, match your line and your rods to your baits always. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are the best. And don't forget, get outside.